Alrighty. I don't click. I don't have a very good uh, visual there, but good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to our October 4th school board meeting. Uh, at this time, if you could all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Okay. Uh, The purpose of this meeting is for the board to conduct board business. The meeting is open to the public and is recorded. Uh, you can listen to all past board meetings by visiting board docs through our district website. This meeting is being presented via Zoom. It is not appropriate for audience members to interrupt board business or ask questions during the meeting. A portion of this meeting reserved for public comment. Board members will not engage in discussion or debate with members of the public. Superintendent may provide information if appropriate. The board chair acknowledges input received and may, if needed, ask the superintendent to look into the matter and report back to the board. If you have any concerns about individual district employees or specific complaints that require an administrative response, please contact the office of the superintendent directly. Uh, if uh, during live virtual public meetings, which this is, uh, please raise your hand and you will be unmuted uh, when it is your turn to speak. We will do our best to call on you in the order you raised your hand. Commenters will be allowed audio privileges only. Please state your name and address. Commenters who violate the guidelines below may have their speaking privileges removed. Agenda items will be addressed as listed in the agenda and virtual participants, please mute your mics and disable your video. All right. Let's see, what do we got up next? Um, Director Pickens, would you uh, read our vision and mission statement for us today, please? Sure, be happy to. Um, our vision. Our community inspires and prepares each student to thrive and our mission in connection with our community, the SWIM School District empowers staff to inspire hope and provide flexible, innovative learning opportunities in a safe and respectful environment so each student thrives. Awesome. Thank you. And I'll go ahead and read our acknowledgement. The acknowledgement, the land we stand on, the SWIM School District administrative and school buildings sit on the ancestral land of the Sklalem people. While the Sklalem traditionally come from one nation, history has led to the formation of three sovereign Sklalem Klalem tribal governments. The Lower Elwal Klalem tribe located in Port Angeles, Jamestown Sklalem tribe located in Squim, Port Gamble Sklalem tribe located in Kingston. The district's primary partnership is with the Jamestown Sklalem tribe. Today, the tribe and district share a partnership that includes official consultation on program and funding changes that may directly affect American Indian and Alaska Native students, as well as holistic service planning for students to remain successful in their educational journeys. All right, first item up, we have uh, the approval of our September 20 regular meeting minutes. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you. Oh. Do I do I have a second? I'll second. All right. I'll second. Have, all right. We have a motion from Director Pickens and a second from Director Koo. Uh, Director Koo, you'd have something to state? Yeah, just I don't think it's terribly important. I just sent a couple of non-substantive um, yep. edits to Tracy, um, but they're they're immaterial to the content of the minutes otherwise. Okay. Any any further discussion? Are we um, we we voting um, via via board docs? I believe that's the plan. Okay. Okay. 
no further discussion. If we could, uh, there we go. All righty. All right, motion carries. Okay, next up we have, uh, are there any changes or additions uh, to our agenda? And if none, then I'll take a motion for approval of our agenda. Move to approve as presented. Thank you. I'll second. All right, motion from Director Koo, second from Director Pickens. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor vote online here. I am unmuted. There we go. Okay, next item up, we have our consent agenda. Can we get a motion for approval? As presented. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm Dr. Koo. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right. We have a motion and a second from the Director Pickens. Uh, any discussion, Director Koo? At the risk of uh, repeating myself, just a hearty uh, welcome to uh, our new hires uh, for joining the Swim School District family. Awesome. Yeah. Always good to get some new, new peeps on our team. All right. Anything else? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor vote when it shows up. Okay, next up we have our public comment. I do have a few to read. And then uh, if anybody in the audience would like to uh, make a public comment, please uh, raise your hand and we will get to that once I've read through these couple of, I only have a few today uh, to read through and we will, uh, we will do that. So let me um, find my, here's my notes, okay. All right, uh, there were a couple we uh, didn't get to last board meeting, so we're gonna make sure we get those covered. Uh, first off from uh, Levi Siemens, parent of kid, uh, kindergarten student. Good evening, local school board, school board. To start off with, I have a new kindergartner starting at Gray Wolf Elementary this year. As with all parents and families' opinions, there is a battle whether or not masks and vaccines should be mandatory. I'm not here to argue the facts and so-called science, whether the masks are helpful or not, do I believe that COVID is more deadly than the common cold? No, absolutely not. As you, the board members stated in your last meeting, safety is your number one priority. Uh, learning should be number one. After all, uh, this is why we go to school, correct? Of course, safety is just as important, but this forceful overreach of a power grab to make children wear masks for us for up to seven hours a day is simply sick and embarrassing of the school, school board. You say your hands are tied behind your backs here, is beating around the bush and following the herd. Listening to the board members speak at the last meeting was very disheartening as you guys do not sound like fighting for our children and giving the parents the choice whether they want their children wearing a mask or not is your priority. If you want to wear a mask or get vaccinated, then all the power to you, but don't make your problems our problems. If you're scared that you or your child will get sick, then stay home until the news and school social media stops reporting on nothing more dangerous than the common flu or cold. 
Do you sanitize the coffee lids from Starbucks before your lips touch it? I didn't think so. This has got to come to an end, folks. Use common sense. We all get a runny nose and itchy throat every year. Our body naturally heals itself every time. Squim School Board members, please stand up at a local level and let's make this a personal choice, whether or not you and your children want to wear masks and get vaccinated. Unenrolling our students because you will not stand up for them will hurt everyone involved. Our local taxes help pay your salary year after year. The, the least you could do is help us fight for what is right, personal choice. Thank you. Okay, next we have Lori Gilcrest, uh, Squim Alumni Associate President. The Squim School Alumni Association stands firmly behind the request to name the, the football field stadium in memory of uh, Myron Tetchard. He was the number one fan of all Squim School sports for many years. He was recognized at an assembly and there is a tribute to him in the Squim High School Annual of 2020-2021. The SSAA hopes the board will revise and update policy 6970, include a procedure for the community to request that buildings, sports areas, classrooms, et cetera, be named for local people who have done so much to support our children. Thank you for your consideration in our, in our request. Johnny and Jacqueline uh, Heath or Russell. Uh, we agree with fellow Squim High School alumni and community members that the football field should be named Myron Tetrud football field. Myron was definitely the most committed Squim High School sports fan in Squim. Whenever we would see him out and about, the conversation was always about our Squim High School sports teams. This would be a much deserved honor in memory of Myron. Lori Welsh Taylor, Squim alumni. I am sure this is weighing heavy on a lot of Squim High School alumni and happen to be one myself as were my kids. Myron with, was always a smile and extreme proudness of the Squim High Wolves has cheered on and encouraged players in all sports and even those not participating. I was a 1981 graduate and started attending sport events in 1976 when I moved to Squim. My kids graduated in 2008 and 2009 and played sports and have found memories of Myron cheering them on. This is not political as some would like it to make, to make it. It is about doing and honoring Squim's biggest fan, Myron Tetrude, and doing the right thing. As an alumni, I'm 100% of naming the field after him. And Rob Nelson, Squim alumni, as a lifelong resident of Squim and someone who went to Squim schools, K through 12, 12, I can tell you that no one in this community deserves to have a field named after them more than Myron Tetrude. He was there for every game. He supported us in rain, snow, sleet, and hail. Whether he felt good or not, please consider naming the field after him. And that is all our public comments written in for now. Okay. Looks like we have... Uh, first up is Sheena Younger. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we got you, Sheena. Okay, thank you. Um, I just wanted to call in. I'm going to be respectful of the rules, but I am going to say that within the last 24 hours, I've grown up almost 10 times, and I need you guys to do something. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Sheena. Okay, Michael Roca, you have the floor uh, as soon as you get unmuted. There you go, you got it. Thank you. Um, I wanted to take this time, thank you board members um, for uh, taking the time to listen to us. I have a couple uh, concerns. One, um, that we're not meeting in person. I know that the last meeting um, there was one individual, a paraplegic with 20% lung capacity that refused to wear a mask. Um, but because we had one person there that refused, there were other people that did not like it, but every other person either had a mask on like myself or agreed that they would leave if you would not do it. He was the only one that refused to leave. So I don't know why we're uh, over that one person um, not doing in-person meetings anymore. There's something else that we should know, we'd like to know, uh, which leads me to my next point is parents don't feel like we know anything. Where, you know, we're allowed to sit here and talk. We don't even get the courtesy 
that at least Allison Berry, when she um, took listened to comments, had the respect to respond to, to questions at the end when everyone was done. Um, although I don't agree with everything she said, I did re respect that she, unlike this board, was able to do that, even though she was not required to. I know this board isn't required to, but it would be nice for you to respond to some of the parents' concerns, such as, why are we not meeting in person um, over one person? And if there's something else we need to know, we should know. And then number two, why is there no a parents' advisory board? I was on the parents' advisory board. Um, just kind of seems coincidental, you know, we've got this. You can meet on a Zoom meeting for board meetings, but yet the parents' advisory board can't meet. I'm like, you wonder why parents are frustrated. We don't have a voice. You say you want to hear us, but we don't feel heard. I mean, when is this going to end? I mean, then you go to Zoom meetings and then people aren't attending and they're frustrated and it's last minute changes. It said it was 629, then it's six o'clock and it was normally 530. I'm like, these times are changing. It feels like you don't want parents to be involved. And if that's not the case, then why can't you have an, a form, even if it was on Zoom, unfortunately, where parents could have some questions answered? It feels like a shadow, uh, things are, are, are being made in the dark and you know we don't get to hear that stuff. And I understand you guys as a board have, have your, your time and your workshops to do that stuff, but we deserve some feedback from you instead of just these orders. We, don't, we feel like we have a president that doesn't listen uh, to the other side. We have a governor that won't take questions. And now we have school boards that won't take questions either and don't give parents a form. And then even the parents advisory board, you guys don't even honor anymore. So all in there, but you know, and the last thing I wanna end on is, is what is our plan when they start mandating that our kids be vaccinated and all that, you know, can we send a letter to the governor from our school board saying, hey, what's going on? Is this happening? Here's, we, we don't agree with certain stuff. I mean, we, it just feels silent and we need some help as parents. We need to be heard. We need some feedback. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Eric. And even thank you, Jim Stouffer. Um, even though Jim and I don't agree 100% eye to eye, he did take the time to, to come and make me feel heard at times. So anybody that's willing to do that, I appreciate it. I don't feel like the rest have been willing to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. So uh, in, in light of your question, I will actually uh, answer a couple of those. So first of all, um, going back to last board meeting, uh, one of the issues that we did because of the unfortunate situation that ran into we ran into at that board meeting, uh, we were that board location uh, with a public group is um, kind of put the staff in a in a in what we felt was an unsafe situation. So what we're working on is at that time. Uh, is to try to find a better location where we can provide better opportunity for people to come in and speak uh, as well and in a safer environment uh, where we have a little more room for people to come in so we can get more, more parents in uh, as well. So that is part of the issue. Um, and at this time, we just, we, uh, we're working on that process uh, to do that. Once we get that sorted out, uh, we will get back to, uh, to in-person meetings. I uh, hope that answers that question for you. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and again, we, you know, we, it's not that we're not listening. We stated this, you know, several times, uh, you know, we, we, whether we have, we agree or disagree with the masking mandates uh, at this point, uh, you know, we're going to talk about this part actually later in our discussion, in our, in our agenda. Uh, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, I mean, we're losing a lot of medical employees. We're losing uh, a lot of my my own staff uh, due to governor's uh, mandates on uh, vaccination rules and those things. Uh, you know, and I'll just state this from my thoughts that you know he's not he's not budging from any of these, and it could be an extreme uh, cost to the district, and and that's something we're going to actually look into what that is. We'll we're going to talk about that later today uh, if, for us to not follow any of these mandates, unfortunately, and uh, we we just can't put the the district in financial disarray. It's not that we're not listening to you. We are, as the individual stated in the public comment that I read. It's not that we're playing that our hands are tied. Our hands are tied. That, and that's, so I will leave it at that. Um, and uh, we will move on. I hope, I hope Michael, that did answer some of your, some of your questions though. Okay. Uh, did we have any other 
hands up. I don't see any. Okay, next up we have our student board representatives. And I think our senior representative, Alyssa, Alyssa Bibai, is back. She is back, President Gibson. I don't see her. Oh, goodness. Well, that's unfortunate. Okay. Well, with that said, then I will turn it over uh, to Kalen Klinger. Thank you. I have three reports to share today. The first is from Gray Wolf Elementary. And what's happening there is that our the current fourth and fifth grade students will be taking their previous third and fourth grade SBA tests from last fall. Uh, from last year, Superintendent Reichdahl had delayed testing from the spring to this fall, and they're ready and excited for their kids to show what they know and for their Gray Wolf system to have a clear picture of the gaps they will need to fill. Their current fourth graders will be testing on October 5th and 12th, and their fifth graders will be testing on October 6th and 13th. From Helen Howler, the current fourth and fifth grade students will also be taking their third and fourth grade SDA tests sometime in the, new, in the near future. Helen Heller will also be working with the North Olympic Library System to host an event exploring the effects of trauma and resilience, and, will, and that will be available for families on a variety of days this month. At the high school level, I've heard many students expressing large amounts of excitement and gratitude that we were able to bring clubs back into person. Recently, the high school held a club fair to inform the students about all the different clubs and extracurriculars that Schwim High has to offer, and it ended up being a huge success. I personally had the honor of being able to participate it myself and it inspired a lot of students to enrich themselves educationally. And I thought it'd be appropriate to express the students' gratitude for being able to work with them on this. However, this also brings about another issue of which I've heard some concerns from the students about, and that's gonna be fundraising. Due to safety concerns of COVID-19, clubs last year were not able to fundraise to try and limit contact as per the guidelines and regulations. As such, many of the clubs are lacking in funds that are required for them to run, and although it may be wise to still try and limit contact, the students are interested in a way to try and run fundraisers in a safe manner to better run their clubs. That's all I have to report at this time. Thank you, Kim. Okay, next up we have regular board communication. Don't, don't skip us, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, and I'll start off with uh, Director Koo. Okay, good evening. Um, I don't really have a whole lot other uh, than just hearing the comments made. Um, I guess for the sake of just putting it out there, uh, Larry, you're the only one who doesn't know this uh, just because of uh, my emailing the executive committee, but I did request an executive session uh, to discuss an item referenced in the comments tonight. Um, the other thing too, and Jane, this is half a thank you and half an apology. Um, I sent Jane a couple of uh, leads for lack of a better term that I got from parents. One of them is a uh, supposedly self-automated uh, live streaming uh, platform for sports. Um, and the, the sticker is that it's no cost to the district. Now I'm, I'm skeptical of that. And, uh, but I did pass that info along to Jane, uh, after, uh, watching our, uh, our women's soccer team, uh, play against Bainbridge who uses this system. I was pretty impressed with what it offered. Um, so thank you to Jane for, uh, taking that and, um, uh, passing that along to Bo and obviously thank you, uh, to Bo and, uh, everyone else who may be involved in kind of kicking the tires on that. The other one was uh, from another parent uh, regarding uh, a seemingly generous offer from Bark, uh, which is a um, an internet uh, monitoring service for parents and other. Um, and admittedly, I'm I'm looking at it for our own uh, FTEs. Uh, don't tell them I said that. But uh, anyway, that could be a resource um, for parents and excuse me, the district alike. Um, so again, thank you, Jane. The apology in that is, um, you know, I'm, I'm not one to uh, say when you can and can't work, but I found myself replying to an email over the weekend, and I want to make crystal clear that I have zero expectation of follow-up from 
uh, I guess the board's only staff member, which is you, Jane, <laughs> over the weekend. So if you choose to, that's fine. Uh, but I, I want to say before uh, the Almighty and anyone listening uh, that that is absolutely not an expectation and uh, personal uh, balance is critically important to me. So um, just for what it's worth, <laughs> I wanted to mention that. Thank you. But um, otherwise, I obviously am very appreciative of your responsiveness. Um, and I think that's all I have other than just um, uh, just continuing to watch our students and navigating through this, you know, tough time. Um, you know, it's particularly stressful right now, um, as we heard mention of in, in the public comments. And um, I'm, I'm acutely aware of that and uh, just want to acknowledge it uh, to all of us. Um, and I, I feel like uh, we're, we're moving forward on what I believe is the right path, but there are certainly opportunities to continue to seek perfection and, and do better uh, than we did yesterday. So um, I'm excited for that work, but I just want to I just want to just tell folks who are uh, saying things uh, either tonight uh, or online or things like that. Um, I, for one, am seeing them. Um, they're weighing on my heart. And I uh, look forward to discussing some of those items uh, later in the agenda tonight. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Director Ku. Uh, uh, Director Jeffries. Yeah, thank you very much. And um, I want to thank the uh, community members who are online. There's about 19 people. And I appreciate you attending to. Uh, find out what's going on the school board and I appreciate the, the public comments. I think some of the other answers or concerns that were brought up may be answered uh, uh, during the rest of the meeting. So listen, uh, hopefully you'll, you'll hear an answer, whether you like it or not, that's up to you, but um, you'll hear some answers to some of your concerns. Uh, executive session. Yeah, I don't, I, I was not aware that one was requested, but I be, would be glad to, uh, meet anytime and because um, we do have some issues that need to be discussed in um, that format. Um, Claylum, Claylum, Clay, Clay, I can't say it. Um, my tongue is tied. Sorry. Claylum. That's close. Close. Claylum, yeah. I don't know why. It gets that way sometimes. I would encourage the um, district um, the superintendent to kind of look into that uh, fundraising concerns that he brought to us from uh, the other students. And um, I think it's important that we uh, try to act on those student recommendations and questions and concerns. That's fantastic. Um, other than that, um, Director um, Gibson made some comments about um, using terms, unfortunately, and our hands are tied. I don't look at it that way. I fully support public health and safety. And um, in these difficult times, there's some difficult things we need to do to keep the staff and the public, um, and the staff and the students healthy. And so I, I don't look at it as a, um, an unfortunate situation that we need to follow public health rules and regulations not only for COVID, but all kinds of things to keep our students and staff safe. So I have a little bit different view of that. But other than that, I look forward to tonight's discussion. We got some interesting topics. And uh, oh, I will say that I was able to escape, and maybe that's not the pri proper word either. I headed off to uh, Colorado to visit my sister and my wife's sister, whom we hadn't seen for three years uh, due to. Um, travel restrictions and then COVID came along and uh, we had a great time. I was able to attend a, a function at Adam State University that I greatly appreciated. So it was kind of rejuvenating to get around some of those people and talk to them. So I came back, I uh, gave myself a few days and then gave myself a COVID test even though I'm fully vaccinated and it came out negative. So um, it was a good time and uh, thank you. Thank you, Director Jeffries. Uh, Director Pickens. Thank you. Yeah, just 
just really a, a few things. Um, just want to mention, looking forward to the uh, the discussion regarding our uh, our capital capital levies project, our capital projects report, um, and as well as the ideal pro profile for a superintendent. So we've got some things on the horizon that I'm think will be um, great for the district. Looking forward to those conversations. Um, as well, I I know we have a a draft policy on um, on different um, um, naming facilities. And I know we've had a lot of public comment on that particular issue and folks have been very patient on that. And so uh, I am looking forward to moving that forward as well. Um, I, uh, I appreciate Kalen bringing up, uh, bring, I love the fact that we have the voice of, voice of the student in these meetings. So uh, keep that coming, Kalen, appreciate that. Um, and also, I know there was a, a comment about just the, the voice of the community and um, parents advisory, that sort of thing, and certainly something that would be uh, uh, welcome from my perspective. So I'm looking uh, forward to, to different formats, whether it be um, uh, look, exploring maybe some different formats to get that, uh, that input. Um, and somewhat related to that, uh, just wanted to state that I am um, definitely in favor of, of um, going back to in-person meetings as long as we can, um, um, you know, have a safe environment for, for, that, for that to happen. So um, other than that, looking forward to, uh, I, I won't, there's a few other details I wanna share, but I'll wait until the appropriate point to the agenda to, to discuss those. Thank you very much. find my unmute button and uh thank you guys uh um, i don't really have anything particular to add at this time so uh, with that said we can move on to our next agenda item looks like we have our team from winaha is going to be presenting on our capital projects Good evening. Uh, I, thank you for having us on today and uh, want to say again since our last meeting in August, uh, we appreciate the opportunity to be your representative construction manager for the capital projects levy. Um, to go over the current report since we met back in August and we were first introduced, there's been a number of coordination meetings that have happened through the, uh, through the month of August and September trying to really drill down on the prioritization of the projects that are gonna be done over the next fiscal year, starting either before April or from April, 2022 through 2023. One of the items that we recognized was the uh, kind of the key to starting this all off is the networking project that is being handled by Bo Young. Uh, so we've had a number of meetings with him to understand how those, um, if you can go to actually page three. All right, yeah. Having a meetings with Bo to understand what those network projects actually mean for the remainder of the uh, the levy and what it, what those what his networking project kicks off for the next year. One of the items we figured out was that the technologies building. I mean the. Uh, voice system within the district over at the transportation system, I believe at o um, Olympic Peninsula Academy uh, and at the um, Central Kitchen are all needed for to the, uh, the school district's main system, and that has become a major priority. A um, couple of items shifted in responsibility from the original levy presentation. For example, the sewer work um keith uh yeah I, I need to be recognized by the chair oh sorry um one of the items that was recognized i mean found out was that originally gay gray wolf's wolf's uh sewer replacement was going to be installed in tier two that's been moved to this coming year just due to the necessity of degradation of the system uh so voice systems are moving forward it discussions on those network systems are moving forward uh Fire alarm systems over Hell and Haller have been identified uh, as some minor urgent uh, installations to be completed within this school year, and we're waiting for the uh, waiting for the uh, distribution in April. 
as well as trying to reprioritize the projects kind of in a logical sense of what what projects can be fast tracked and or ones which have taken lower priority to resituate the uh, prioritization. If you uh, move to page four. Chris, you might adjust your mic. You're breaking up a little bit occasionally. Oh. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. I just before we move on, Keith, Sorry did you need that. to add? Did you need to add anything? Before, uh, or 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 hold on. No, thank you. I was just trying to get Chris to adjust his mic. Okay. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Apologize. One of the down downfalls of uh, not being able to hear yourself through the uh, the Zoom meeting. All right. So one of the items I just wanted to go over, since everybody's seen and been familiar with this project uh, layout from the tier one to tier four. Um, it's a little bit easier to visually see some of the changes that have ha been happening. For example, the Great, Great Wolf roof replacement actually was completed this uh, past summer in the, and will be removed from the project list. Uh, that was originally anticipated to be done here until a uh, up through April. Um, the uh, sewer connection on Gray Wolf uh, was moved from tier two to be completed between 2022 and, and or even after 2023 due to some issues that were found within the system has been moved over to tier one and the deletion of the uh, or the completion of the roof replacement has allowed that shift to happen. Um, if you'll scroll down. Um, Helen Haller um, originally was anticipated to be done in 2023. The fire, the fire uh, alarm systems that have been identified as urgent have been moved forward. Uh, and these types of things are what have been in the conversation for the last two months. We're currently scheduling out to start development of RFPs for these, new, these upcoming and urgent projects, including both the elevator replacement at the uh, district building and the build out of the upper upstairs uh, suite that is in, that's not currently occupied within the district building to help serve the, uh, the district as a whole. All these conversations are happening both with the project team uh, Dr. Prine, as well as uh, facilities and uh, 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 Ms. Apeland to make sure that we're not making any movements to this without, under, without the knowledge of the project team that's been designated. As of right now, that's the general update. Uh, there'll be more information as, the, uh, as these projects get flushed out. Any questions? Go ahead, Director Koo. All right, thank you, sir. Um, I don't have any specific questions, Chris, um, other than to say one, thank you for the update. Um, this, this is great, I love this format uh, that y'all are bringing forward here tonight. Uh, but just a note to you and Keith and any of your other team, I just want to acknowledge that I think the last time we were all in the same room together, there was a split vote uh, about selecting Winnaha. But if, if, it's, if it's worth saying, uh, please know that you have the full faith and support of this entire board uh, for the work y'all are doing for us. So um, I'm, I'm kind of one of those guys that wants to make sure, <laughs> you know, there's no words unspoken, but uh, please know that that is the case. Uh, and we greatly value uh, your help with our district in doing this. Um, that's really all I have other than just to uh, a similar comment I made a few months ago, which was um, that I believe the voters uh, approved a package that indicated that we are looking for um, a higher quality than we've, our district is, we are resilient, we are scrappy, uh, we have made do uh, in times that we've had to make do. Uh, and I have just un unlimited uh, appreciation for our operations staff for keeping us moving as a district. But when we're now at kind of the, the buffet line, if you will, uh, for technology uh, and other, uh, you know, other things for our district, I believe the voters have given us not a carte blanche, but certainly their, their uh, vote of support uh, for a level of quality that 
I, as a parent, uh, believe our students enjoy. Uh, and so uh, I just say that in uh, probably in alignment with everything y'all are doing and the conversations you're, have, uh, you're having. But um, again, just for the benefit of putting that out to the, the ether and uh, certainly your team, um, I just wanted to share that with you tonight, but grateful to have you here. All right, great, thanks. Uh, Keith, you had your hand up. Did you uh, wanna add something? Yeah, I'll defer to Chris first and then wrap up after him if there's anything, any any parcels left, little pieces of okay. crumbs left. All right, let me uh, let me go to uh, Director Jeffries first and see Absolutely. what he's got to uh, add, and then we'll come over to you, Chris. Yeah, I want to thank you again for your presentation and for all your project planning that's gone on so far. Can you briefly kind of summarize your interaction with the school district uh, team? I mean, how often do you meet? And... Um, in this planning process, so we can get a, I can get a better feel for um, what's going on there. Of course. Um, so in August, we met every two weeks, trying to get uh, a good handle on what projects were the most prioritized, so we could go and visit the facilities before the opening of the school year. Um, I've currently met about every other week with John. Um, to really getting an understanding what the scope of work is and have been talking with Bo, um, other than our internal meetings that were face-to-face, -face, I've been speaking with Bo about weekly um, to understand what his projects are, what the, how they affect, um, what they're actually trying to accomplish, and to assist him in uh, planning for the future projects based on the work he's doing now. Um, to address the question on quality, I just wanted to make one statement on that as well, is one of the things that we're looking at is that the technology that's in, in SQUIM, uh, the SQUIM School District has, uh, for the voice system, for example, has reached its last leg. And what, they're look, what we're looking at is systems that will be uh, functional and technologically relevant over the course of the next you know, decades. Um, so it's one of those items that we're making sure that these aren't patches. We're making sure that these are upgrades and that they'll service the district as a whole to come. Good, thank you very much. And Eric. Yeah, just, just wanna say uh, appreciate, appreciate everything. Um, I um, definitely appreciate prioritizing anything that could be be related to the, the safety and security of our students. And I think that, that technology and the sound voice access systems, voice systems, I mean, you call it, cer certainly come to mind. Um, and um, and then I think um, Director Koo said, kind of took, took, took the words right from me, just regarding that, um, you know, what we're looking for regarding that, that quality and something that, you know, students can feel proud of, the community can feel proud of regarding our schools. So appreciate your work and um, you, have, uh, you have my full support. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. I'll just echo what uh, has been said there as well, Chris. So thanks for uh, you know, looking at these items. I know we had put them in a, in a timeline and everything together, but uh, you know, it's, it's good to see that there's some conversation and collaboration going on to make sure that we're uh, maybe bumping some of those items up that are a little more critical and, and we've got some better uh, ability to take care of those. So, you know, thanks. Thanks for looking at all that. And uh Appreciate that. And Keith, uh, if you wanted to add anything at the end, the uh, floor is yours, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, a couple of things I wanted to touch on <clears throat> in that report. As you say, if you, if you take some time to go through it, you'll see some, some projects that don't have budgets aligned to them yet. It's a developing report, work in progress. Um, so um, I just did, I wanted to highlight that so you didn't think it was an error or, a, or, or an oversight. Um, secondly, um, I, I believe when in our, in our vetting process and, and the discussion and so forth that led up to the, the vote, um, and selection of Winnaha, we had some discussions about market conditions, escalation, supply chain, etc. Um, I, I'm sure it's not going to be a surprise to anybody. Those are continuing pressures, uh, within the industry and, and, our, our markets at large, and, and that's will be a continuing discussion. So just be prepared for it as we move forward. 
it's part of what Chris and the team are dealing with um, and, and addressing. So anticipating that and you know we're trying to fit everything into the bottom the levy package that we can um, to meet the commitments so keeping those goals in mind and as well as um, I just did want to touch on the outreach effort as well uh, Chris has provided um, to uh, Superintendent Prine a few uh, draft outreach plans concepts for further discussion refinement, et cetera. So that is that is very high on our hit list as well. So thank you all this evening and, and your time and uh, no worries to the split vote in, in the last session. Um, I've served on boards myself and um, directed and it can be rather painful when you have a board that has no discussion or no dissent. Um, the, the, sometimes the the decisions can feel diluted without that. So I think that's an important process and, and a part of our, our core values um, guiding principles is everybody has a voice. So I appreciate that. Um, we appreciate that and, and take that to heart. So thank you and um, ha happy to answer any other questions, but thank you all. And uh, if not, I hope you have a good evening. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Keith and Chris. We appreciate it and, and all the hard work you're doing there. Uh, looking forward to more and more results down the road. Thank you. All right. Next up, we have our annual HR report. Victoria, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Gibson. The Human Resources Office has been looking forward to sharing some of what we've been up to this past year. And in an effort to keep it as interesting as possible, we've prepared a short video for your viewing pleasure. So I'll just turn it over to Tracy, who has the play button. Tracy? Good evening, President Gibson, board members, Dr. Prine, the Human Resources Office is happy to share our work with you this evening, and we'd like to start out by framing who we are and what we stand for. The Human Resources Office of Squim School District exists to support the goals and challenges of Squim School District by providing services that promote a work environment characterized by fair treatment of staff, open communications, personal accountability, trust, and mutual respect. We are helpful, humble, and human, and we do our best to infuse our mission into our work. There are myriad tasks that must be accomplished by our office, but one of the best parts of our job is building the team. We believe that the key to providing the innovative learning environments we have promised our community starts by building a workforce with diversity of thought and an array of skills from a variety of backgrounds. Our office was a flurry of activity this past summer and even into fall. Between September 1st of 2020 and September 1st of 2021, we have hired 34 new staff members, 22 new certificated staff and 17 classified. When you compare this data to the prior two years, what stands out to us is that we are doing a good job with our position control, balancing our separations with our new hires, always mindful of the budget. But another story this tells us is that Squim School District has had the opportunity to welcome a fresh infusion of new faces this school year. And along with that, was the wonderful opportunity to reinstate staff who were part of our reduction in force in the spring of 2020. As your HR director, being still relatively new to SQUIM, I'm looking forward to capturing this data in the years to come and mining for nuggets to inform our hiring practices and strategies to cast that wide net to attract top-notch staff. SQUIM is a very special place, worthy of the very best. Speaking of the best, we found great joy this year creating new ways to celebrate our people. 
We gave our retirees a multimedia send-off that we hope expressed just how much we value the investment each of them made to the students and families of the Squim School District. We also joined up with the Rally Day team to place signs in the yards of the folks who have devoted over 25 years of their one and only lives to make a difference through education. In addition to celebrations, we are particularly proud of some of our accomplishments. HR specialist Ashley Adams led the charge to research and implement a new absence management system called ReadySub. Our former system, SubOnline, was very old and really was no longer supported by IT. It was the time to upgrade. We went live in August and we are still enjoying some growing pains, but the feedback so far has been very positive. HR specialist Valerie Nieper stepped up to the challenge to lead our paraeducators through their initial certification program. She researched pathways and partnered with WEA to move all our paraeducators through the required hours and in collaboration with association leadership, supported our paraeducators through their final certification process. In response to the district's goal for 100% of our staff and students to feel like they belong, we have created two new positions for the Squim School District, the Equity and Family Engagement Coordinator and the District Translator. We are so excited to be better equipped to serve all students. Finally, we successfully settled agreements with the Teamsters and the public school employees of Squim. We are currently in negotiations with the Squim Education Association and look forward to growing in our collaborative collegial relationship. There is so much to celebrate and so much to be proud of. But our days are not without challenges. And we think it's important to be transparent with the board so you can know how some pieces are impacting the work of our office. First of all, COVID. Since the beginning, this has been a moving target. One of my core values as your HR director is to build trust through equity. COVID has made this challenging. Some folks can do their jobs remotely, some can't. Some receive accommodations regarding mask wearing, some don't. We ask folks to adhere to guidelines and then the guidelines will shift. And the most immediate challenge we face today is navigating the vaccination mandate. The absolute last thing we want to do is send letters to employees telling them they no longer meet the requirements of their job. Yet tomorrow morning, since the final vaccine dose had to have been completed by today in order to meet the October 18 deadline, those employees from whom we have not received proof of vaccination or request for an exemption will be receiving such a letter. We need all of our people and we can't afford to lose even one. Navigating school in the time of COVID has been difficult and it seems the most arduous part of the journey may still be ahead of us. And the other challenge we have been facing is managing our public records requests. Tonight, the board has been provided the public records transparency report that outlines the current number of public records we have open. We honor the right of our public to see our work and we appreciate the importance of holding public servants accountable for how we conduct business. But as the board reviews our report, you may be able to discern that Squim School District is in a season where the Freedom of Information Act is being exceedingly well used by the public. Our PRO is frequently overwhelmed by both the volume and the content of our requests. So between COVID, and our voluminous public records. The HR staff longs for brighter days ahead and we can focus our energies on taking our department to the next level and providing that higher level of service to the humans we support. So that is your human resources department in a nutshell. We strive to be humbly helpful. We love our people. We're always looking for ways to help squim win and together we will face each challenge with the goal of treating our people with the dignity 
and respect. We are Victoria, Ashley, and Valerie, and we are so honored to serve the Squim School District. Thank you, thank you, Victoria. And thank you for all the work that you're, you and your team are doing. It's, a, it's amazing. I know it's been a struggle uh, with, with all the different things you stated towards the end there. Um, but in that same light, you all continue to keep your head up and move forward and, and do what you, what you do. And, and from the board, I just wanna say we appreciate you and, and all of that, uh, all that you and your team do. It's uh, extremely important to the team and to the staff. Thank you. Thank you, President Gibson. All right, uh, Director Coog. Thank you, sir. I, as a marketer, somebody who at least went to school for marketing, I can't not recognize the, the quality of that presentation, but uh, I do want to say that the content was not lost on me uh, amidst the, the very smooth uh, presentation that was given. Um, I guess one question I have, um, other than gratitude to our HR team, because HR is an animal that I have leaned on in my professional career uh, a few times, um, more times perhaps than I deserve, but I've never fully understood. So um, that's just my acknowledgement of the, the, the very challenging um, crevice, I guess, in which you operate because uh, it, it involves confidentiality, it involves uh, humans, and we are very dynamic. Um, and so I just, I appreciate that. And um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. But my question is, um, how many uh, how many notices do we anticipate will be going out uh, tomorrow morning regarding the vaccine mandate uh, in terms of uh, staff who have not provided um, uh, proof of such? Yeah, that that's a good question. In fact, we were at the you know today before we left, we were you know are there any more? Are there any more? Who else can we add to the list? So. We're actually very hopeful right now. We stand at, we're missing 24 notifications from our regular employees. We still have some substitutes and maybe some athletic coaches and things that are, are missing, but the most critical piece to make school happen every day, of course, is the, um, the regular employees. And we are still missing 24 either um, proof of vaccinations or requests for exemptions. So our fingers are crossed because, you know, Sometimes we'll forget or they thought they sent it or they didn't, or I don't think I have it, but maybe I do. So, you know, we still have a couple of weeks, but unfortunately tomorrow morning is when we have to send out the letter saying, hey, you know, we haven't received this from you. Great, thank you. And President Gibbs, I'm sorry, I put my hand down too soon. May I, I had a couple of follow-ons. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, I, for the record, I'm an elected official, so I'm um, obligated to, you know, kind of state the hill I'm on. I'm flatly opposed to uh, the vaccine mandate requirements, and that's something we'll discuss later. But uh, like you, um, that Victoria, that's not something that is in our locus of control, and so um, it is what it is. But uh, unlike you, I, I feel obliged to to. Uh, put my personal opinion forward uh, just because I was elected by the public. Um, who handles the religious exemptions? Because that seems to be the only, um, I guess, um, avenue for a number of folks. Um, but having looked into that, I understand the basis uh, by which um, people may choose to pursue that. Is that done locally or is that done uh, at a higher level? No, that's done locally. So uh, there's been forms that our employees have been able to complete that state their um, reason for the request for it's a, it's really an accommodation. So um, we are able, we have been able to accommodate those requests. And we are hopeful that that our accommodations are going to work. So, you know, the employees who have reached out for an exemption have been able to receive one. Great, thank you. That's great feedback. I appreciate yeah. that. 
Okay, Larry, you're up next. Okay, yeah, I just want to thank you for the presentation. Yeah, I really like that format. Um, kind of a anytime we can use technology to improve the communication, and I thought that was uh, one great avenue. Plus, talking to you personally like this to ask questions, I want to just say that I fully support what you guys are doing over there. I I get the sense or know that you are overwhelmed right now. So if there's anything else uh, the board can do to support you, I would uh, encourage you to contact, um, talk with Dr. Prine and have her contact us and come up with something if um, we need somehow to get you more help or get you more technology or get more of whatever you need to uh, handle right now this uh, crush load between um, COVID and information requests and just regular HR things of trying to uh, fill a couple more positions, uh, let us know. And um, and just, just know that I agree with um, Director Gibson when he talked about uh, the full support of this board that we're really um, appreciative of all the hard work and expertise that you bring to the job. So thank you. Uh, Director Pickens. Yeah, just just briefly wanted to mention, appreciate your um, everything both yourself and your department is doing. It's been uh, certainly hectic, really been hectic ever since you've gotten to the to, to our district. So um, but the fact that we're we've got 24 folks left and my 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 guess is that um, like a lot of folks, there's things, things are just crazy right now. And we probably have some folks out there that will even get to that tomorrow. And I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that they are, but want to thank you for, um, just, this is just yet another challenge that you've had to face. Um, and, um, thank you for, for taking on this work. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, and and just kind of add to that, uh, you know, being a state employee, you know, we're we're we've been under the same kind of situation. And today, I spent part of my day getting a couple of my staff. It's you. Let's get your documents uploaded. Uh, you know, you, you, we we need to get that in, or or you're going to be getting receiving a, an email tomorrow. And yeah, that there there are those that dragging their feet or. Um, I, I had one that actually got her second vaccination today. So that, okay, now we need to get your paperwork in. <laughs> Let's do that. I know you take the rest of the day off, but anyway, appreciate it. It's a lot to, it's a lot to uh, go through and uh, you know, the stipulations rules of those accommodations and all can be very tricky. And, and uh, I, I know that you and the team are doing everything you can to, to make sure that that happens. So thank you. Sure, thank you. And I muted myself, hit the wrong button. Well, with that said, uh, you are back up next with the uh, records transparency report you mentioned. Yes, yes. So most of everything I would need to say is, is pretty much covered in the memo attached, right. but um, what you have in front of you is the public records transparency report and on this report we have included only our open requests and I think it's important to restate what was said on the video this evening and that is that it, it truly is the public's right to request these records and the fact that we have a large number of requests is simply that it's a fact. This is just a report in response to the board policy 6030 that was passed. And this is really just our second attempt to present the information. Um, my office is open to thoughts and suggestions as to how this information might be more appropriately presented, but we are just doing our best to make sure we can comply with the policy and put the information out there. And, um, and that's really all there is that I can add. Okay, thank you. Anything from that? Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, just uh, again saying I, I fully support the statement uh, the HR made about uh, the public's right to do this. And I'm not threatening this, but I can definitely see myself on the requesting end of things. Um, hopefully I'll have learned a thing or two about how to uh, limit um, or focus uh, requests in the future. But 
Um, absolutely supportive of this. I love the transparency um, in, in this report and its format. So thank you. The time y'all spend to put this together is um, very much appreciated. Uh, I don't know, but I suspect that the public also appreciates it um, uh, because a lot of times, frankly, that you know, there's a lot of details that uh, get mixed or get missed, um, you know, in the in the rules that we all have to collectively navigate. Um, and this is just one of those opportunities where you can um, either leave breadcrumbs or just shine light on, um, you know situations and concerns. So uh, fully supportive of both the report uh, and our district's response to uh, the requests that come through. And Director Jeffries. Yeah, again, I want to thank you. And actually in particular for all the hard work she goes through to get these um, reports and to uh, satisfy and fulfill the requests that come in. Do you have a good sense or have you talked to other people or are, are our number of requests similar to other school districts our size is it more is it less where are we on that if you have an if you have an idea you know that that's a good question director jeffries i have spoken to a few other directors and i'm getting a little bit of a mixed a mixed bag i think some school districts have been through seasons like ours and you know it, it has um, quelled a little bit so it may be just one of those things where just the current current climate creates maybe more requests than others and then that may wane so right now we're we're enjoying the season of busyness hey thank you good job pass it along to ashley and and whoever else worked on all this yeah i will i will let ashley know all right again thank you for everything victoria Thank you, my pleasure. Okay, next up we have our report from uh, Interim Superintendent, Dr. Perrine. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me, good evening. <clears throat> I have a little frog in my throat. Um, anyway, I just wanted to uh, let people know that our policy committee is starting to be formed and we will be bringing that to the board on October 18th to be approved so we can get going on that work. Um, our instructional materials committee has started up again and we will be uh, meeting on this Thursday. We were going to meet last Thursday and then we had an emergency at the high school. So we postponed the meeting until this Thursday. And we're looking at the curriculums that we are piloting this year. And then we will bring those to the board with all of the documentation and uh, research behind those curriculums. And they are posted on our website uh, currently. Um, I also want to let you know that I went to the Haller Foundation meeting last week and uh, we voted to give out all the awards that the Haller Foundation gives out this time of year. And so I believe um, mid-October around the 19th or 20th, and I'd have to look, we are going to have a virtual awards ceremony since there'll be too many people to bring into one room. So we are um, inviting, we being the Haller Foundation group will be inviting um, all the recipients to uh, find out what their awards will be. So those emails and letters should be going out soon. Also, we interviewed last week for a CTE director. When I say we, we are partnering with Forks and with Crescent School District. We wanted a little over, um, well, we wanted a 0.6 CTE director and they, between the two of them needed uh, point three and forks and a point one in crescent. So uh, we were able to offer a full-time position and the person that accepted was Ned Flater. He is currently our high cap coordinator. However, we do have that position open now so that he can transfer into the CTE director position and he'll start that on the 18th of October after he's approved by the board on the 18th. Um, and then when I get to my goals, I'll talk about some of the other work that we have been doing. But um, I also want to say, um, if Mr. Roca, I know that you're still on, there is a family parent advisory group, and I don't know if that's something you want to be involved in, but I um, certainly can have um, our uh, equity and family engagement coordinator, Marin, reach out to you. I don't know if that's what you had in mind, but we are always looking for parents on that uh, committee, and so I just wanted to make sure that you knew about that as well. Um, 
so that's my report for tonight. Um, and so we've been we've been kind of busy. And now I'd like Tracy to pull up my goals. And so what I've done is I haven't attached all the documents because they were in the September uh, document uh, September meeting. The first I'll be doing this once a month. But what I wanted to show you was what Tracy. Okay. Um, anyway, these are my goals. And so we have been working with Tammy Campbell, actually quite frequently, Dr. Tammy Campbell. And what we are doing with Dr. Campbell, let me grab my work here, is we are, we being the administrative team and um, coordinators and Megan Like is involved, um, we have been crafting a vision for equity and excellence that allows us to clothe the values that we espouse related to equity in our district. Um, by doing so with specificity, it becomes clear to everyone throughout the organization what the desired state will look like for all students, families, and staff. And we have been working on this vision. We started in this summer in August at our, um, at, uh, during our, our retreat date. Well, I guess we would call them during our back to school days. We started with the administrators. We actually started in July with the board and then we moved to the administrators and now we have branched out. And so we have met with Tam, uh, Dr. Campbell probably three times. We're meeting again with her on Friday. Um, she would like us to be able to roll this out to the staff at our November 5th um, professional learning day so we can get feedback from staff. She's having students come this Friday. And so we have asked all the schools to send uh, a number of students. And obviously secondary will be, have a greater number of students than our elementaries, but we wanted all students um, of all uh, grade levels to be involved so we could hear their voice. And so we'll be she'll be working with them and with us this Friday. And then she'll be working with us again um, later on in October before, and then again, November 1st. So very excited about this work because it's really what's good for all kids and all families and all staff. So I'm very excited to see uh, what we as a group come up with. We have kind of a, a draft right now. Um, so, so I think we're all pretty excited to see what, what the end product looks like. And once we get our visioning done, then next semester we'll start on our theory of action. What do we want to do with it? How do we operationalize it in our school district? So that when you hire a new superintendent um, and they come on board July 1st, this work has started. And when you go to look for a new superintendent, you have this in your hand so that the work will continue. It's really important to not let the work go. So um, anyway, that's, that has been, um, I think, beneficial. It's been, it's been fun. Um, and it's been, um, it's been very collaborative and that, that has been really nice for all of us. The other thing that we've done with the admin team is we are working with Laurel Smiley from Dare to Lead. And she um, has worked with us. She worked with us last week. She worked with us um, the week before. She's coming to the board on October 18th. And she talks about how to work as a team um, having tough conversations, uh, respecting people's boundaries, you know, you being having dignity and respect when you speak to people um, in your in your group, taking a step back when somebody's unhappy to sort of just listen and, and figure out, you know, what you can or can't do, or um, you know, just kind of just really being just really not shaming people, but listening to people and understanding that, that um, you know, she's, she's just working with us as an admin team to really solidify our team. And so very excited about that. And she'll be coming again at the end of October for our admin team. And then she's coming also on a professional learning day to, to spend um, a couple hours with our staff as well. And then the rest of that day, we'll be utilizing our UDL strategy. So it all wraps up together. So we'll have, we'll have uh, Laurel Smiley first on November 5th, where she'll be um, talking about working as a team. And then we'll have uh, Dr. Campbell, um, have our principals work with the work that we've been working with with Dr. Campbell on our, on our um, equity and excellence um, visioning, and then we'll roll into our, our UDL in the afternoon. So very excited about that. Our first MTSS, multi-tiered system of support grant funded um, 
day, our very first day for this grant that we're involved in with OSPI is October 12th. So that's very exciting. We have our team put together for that. So just lots of really good work going on in the district for students and um, including everyone and um, making sure that people feel like they belong. So that's what we've been doing amidst all the other things that, um, you know, uh, Victoria alluded to with um, trying to make sure that we're keeping up with all the public records requests and all the other things that go on and, um, with COVID. And oh, and one other thing I need to tell you about uh, COVID is we did get permission to um, do diagnostic tests for our students. It will only happen if parents say yes to that. We are not testing every student every week or anything like that. But if a student has symptoms and their parent has said yes, we will call the parent and say, would it be okay for us to give us a test even though they signed up yes, so that we don't have to send every student with a sniffle home because that's really what's happening right now. Anybody that has anything that looks like it could be a COVID symptom is sent home. And um, we are asking people to go get tested before they bring their students back. So anyway, that's what's been going on with um, the work and um, in my office and, and throughout the district. And I'm just very excited about the work that's taking place in the buildings with our students. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Director Jeffries. Yeah, well, I want to thank you for all the hard work that you're doing and your goals and you know, even all the HR activity, all of this coalesces into doing what's best for our students. And that's our main um, emphasis is student successful learning, successful school experience as they make their way through the SQUIM school system. And um, all the other things that we get involved in, in that process sometimes distract from that vision. And I think you've done a real good job, you and, and the administrative team and the teachers, focusing on uh, the whole purpose of everything we do is we're doing what's good for the students, what's best for the students. And that's a constant drive and we, we change the way we interact, we change our plans as we get feedback from the students and staff and parents. And, but the whole attempt is moving in that direction in spite of everything around us that's been a little bit crazy the last couple of years. So I really appreciate your effort. And uh, I really, really like these uh, reports that you give us monthly and, and how your progress is uh, going because it directly um, relates to the progress of the students and staff. So thank you. You're welcome. It's, it's been really, the work has been, I've really enjoyed this work with the people I'm collaborating with. So it's been, it's been really fun. Just want to say thank you to Dr. Prime. Thank there you. you and uh, Brian. Yeah, same thing. Uh, just, just thank you. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. And Brian, I just want you to know we're still checking into the bark and the um, Pixelot. <laughs> yes, just, and it doesn't matter if you email me on a weekend, I'm going to email you back. So there you go. I'll try and be more mindful. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think, I think we share the same affliction, but I just, since I'm on the board, I want you to be aware that I have zero expectation of you, you and any of your team not having personal time. Thank you. And, and don't be surprised if that response is at like 4.30 in the morning. Just saying. <laughs> I do <laughs> my best my, work. <laughs> why is my phone beeping and my alarm's not even going off for a half an hour? <laughs> oh, it's Dr. Prine. Good morning. Right. Uh, but I want to echo kind of what Larry said on that last part, too. Uh, you know, and I think I stated this last time, uh, you know, in, in my four years on the board and working with a couple of superintendents, we've not had a detailed kind of update on the goals uh, as, as you've provided with us. And it's just great to be able to see kind of the work in a, in a nice format and, and what's being accomplished. So thank you, appreciate, appreciate the, the effort on that. Thank you. Okay. Next up we have, uh, so, um, 
we received an updated version of our ideal profile from Hank on uh, based on some of our input from our last meeting with him. And hopefully everybody's had an opportunity to kind of look through this. Uh, any questions, thoughts? Looks like some of the things that we kind of chatted about uh, either got added or moved around, a little rewording, uh, you know, in, in this served as a superintendent portion, it does uh, say served as, served as a superintendent of schools or has demonstrated executive level experience. So hopefully that will um, not deter those that were not superintendents, but provides a little more up uh, opportunity for some candidates to throw their name in the hat as well. Uh, go ahead, uh, Director Pickens. Yeah, I just wanted to add that I um, have reviewed the changes and I um, I, I am in favor of them. I'm, I'm happy with the adjustments that were made. I'll be boorish and just jump in then. Um, same, nope. same as well. I appreciate the changes uh, that were made and uh, the reformat. Um, I guess, clarifying question, does this require any action by the board? So Brian, I was just started, I was saying that and I was muted. <laughs> so uh, I, I believe we can take action on it. It is, it is listed as an action item. So uh, we could uh, uh, request a motion to approve this as it's stated. Uh, the pleasure of the chair, I'll uh, move to approve as presented. Okay, thank you. Do I have a second on that? I'd second that, Mr. Chair. All right. Now we now we can further our discussion, and I'll throw it over to the Director Jeffries as he had his hand up uh, as well. You're up, Larry. My Zoom screen <laughs> shrunk, and I had trouble finding it. I had no, that I issue earlier. Say, I was just going to say, ditto. And uh, I appreciate the changes that were made after our discussion, and uh, I fully support uh, this going forward and look, looking forward to this um, adventure to find a new superintendent that um, meets our expectations, meets or exceeds our expectations. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. So are we going to vote on this electronically there, Tracy? We can. Uh, I guess we are. There we go. All right. Next up, we have the uh, draft policy 6970. So this is our naming of the football or naming uh, not of the football field, naming of um, facilities and, and buildings and, and such. Uh, so we, we had a discussion on this last time and we looked at uh, some options there. And uh, Director Koo, go ahead, you're up. Great, thank you, sir. And uh, before I comment, um, would it be appropriate for any sort of motion or action at this time, or should this otherwise advance to uh, another conversation? Uh, I, uh, well, we do have it as an action or discussion item. So if uh, anyone is um, compelled, we could take action on, on approving this uh, this evening. Okay, uh, to advance the dialogue, I'd move to approve as presented then. Okay, thank you. Do we have a second on that? Um, I do have a question, Mr. Chair, but for, for purposes of discussion, I'll second. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, and and clarif clarifying question, Mr. Chair, if I might. Yes, to the, go ahead. To the, to the maker of the motion, um, through the chair, of course. Um, are we... Are we putting this, are we approving it right now on the spot? Are we putting it through to a first reading, second reading, um, as we traditionally do with policies? Just want to clarify what the uh, the intent of the, um, the motion is. Good, 
Good question. Mr. Chair, I would uh, accept the friendly amendment uh, for the motion to be modified to indicate that um, we advance it to a second reading. That would be so, that would be just fine by me as the one who seconded it. So noted. Yes. So at this point, we have a motion to approve to move this forward to a second uh, reading um, at the next board meeting, and we have that seconded. Okay. Uh, Go ahead, I Director have a point of order. Yes. Yeah. Just a point of order. The agenda says this is for discussion. I don't see where it says action or discussion. It states it uh, in the in the uh, uh, topic item. So if you look to the right, the item where it's, it says discussion, but if you look at type item in the uh, um, off to the right in board docs, it says type action or discussion. Yeah, there you go. Okay, I'll take, I'll take your word for it right now. Yep, there, just, there, there you go. Uh, it's on the screen if you can look at that. There you go. I got it. Okay, yep. so we had an alternative there. Yes. Um, yeah. I'll probably book up. My intention is to vote for this as um, amended. This is our first reading. I, I mm -hmm. think it's a, we need to follow our routine. Sounds good. Any further, further discussion? Director Ku, your stand still up. Thank you, sir. Um, yep. And I, I acknowledge Director Jeffries, this is a little wonky, but yep. uh, just for the sake of process and formality, one, thank you. Um, I believe, Jane, you were the one that brought this forward, uh, but if not, uh, whomever brought this forward, I appreciate the follow-up on this and giving us uh, breadth and leeway in how we choose to proceed. Um, I, I very much like the committee approach um, that can, you know, uh, receive a lot of the good in input we've received lately uh, and just acknowledge how limiting the previous policy was. Um, I am a little disheartened by the uh, inclusion of the, um, you know, the language around uh, not being able to honor uh, local tribes. However, <laughs> and this is a big however, uh, please let the record show that if uh, that recent legislation had the support of uh, our local tribes, then uh, you'll never hear me mention it again. Uh, so it's just, uh, you know, obviously, I, I think it goes without saying, uh, I understand the intent of that uh, recent legislation uh, in terms of pejorative uh, mascots, uh, but um, hopefully uh, it doesn't hamstring us, but uh, I defer entirely to our uh, local tribal representatives on that matter uh, in, the, in just saying so that, you know, uh, I'm concerned there's a, there's a limitation on future ways to honor uh, local uh, tribes and tribal citizens. However, <laughs> um, I defer entirely to the tribes on that and otherwise uh, fully support uh, the motion uh, to advance this for further consideration at second reading and um, certainly uh, kickstart our ability to address the recent request for naming the, the field after uh, an honorary SQUIM support. Okay, thank you. Uh, Director Pickens. Yeah, just just curious if um, if Dr. Prine has any um, feedback regarding regarding this that she wanted to wanted to share regarding this specific policy. I'm obviously I'm I'm in support of moving this forward. I think um, the sooner the better. But um, any anything else to share regarding this conversation would be um, would be much appreciated. Thanks. Well, I agree with. Um, oops, is it okay, President Gibson? Yes, I absolutely. Okay. Um, yes, I agree with this policy. I agree that we need a committee and it, it gives us flexibility. The way our current policy reads is it can only be after a building, not any kind of other facility, which a football field in this case is what um, kind of brought this forward. So I, um, I agree with the policy and I'm, I'm happy that you're entertaining the discussion and possibly moving it forward so that um, you know, you give me direction and we can get a, um, you know, a committee together and, and get this done. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this. Thank you, Dr. Pratt. And Director Jeffries. 
Yeah, I agree. Um, I would like to see when, when this policy is approved, that whatever their proce whatever procedure you come up with for this be as least restrictive as possible. And just um, to honor the intent of the policy that the, it's the committee that uh, comes up with the recommendation and the board approves it without many other restrictions um, mentioned as far as the RCW on um, using the Native American language and symbols and so on. I think that's a matter of uh, law and that would have to be changed mm -hmm. whether whether we agree with it or not, that has to be changed at that level. But I think in general, it's a pretty good policy. And um, I think we ought to move forward. Oh, one other thing, it was mentioned that the last policy was written in 1958. I think the evidence we have, it was <laughs> 1998. But uh, still, I think it's time for us to uh, revise it and, and come up with a more reasonable approach to naming facilities and buildings and fields and tennis courts and 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 as we see necessary so thank you yeah absolutely thank you okay if we have no further discussion we could uh uh we have a motion to move this forward to second um reading yep there we go follow up my prices there we go. All right. Next up, uh, we have a discussion on our le legislative positions and priority discussion. But uh, what we re what we really need to talk about on this uh, issue at hand is, as we know, currently uh, Director Stoffer is out on medical um, uh, leave, and he is our legislative rep. Uh, so. Um, what we need to do is make sure that we are uh, we are covered uh, for the general assembly that's that's coming up, and uh, so the, this discussion would be to talk about a, um, a another support person that would be uh, able to uh, attend that and take care of that for us. I, I did have a discussion with uh, um, Tim Garshaw. Uh, regarding that recently as well, and you know we've been very active in in this area uh, as from from our district over the years, and he just wanted to make sure that uh, we we continue with that. So um, just uh, looking for um, you know some direction where, where someone that might be uh, willing to take that on uh, as as filling that pos that that role at that at that time. So. Um, uh, Director Koo. Great. Thank you, sir. And I'll start by saying I, I recognize the value in our involvement with this uh, exercise. Uh, and then I want to <laughs> second this with an apology. I had not reached out to uh, any of my board colleagues to um, prep this motion. So there are a lot of assumptions therein, but I would encourage uh, y'all, if you feel differently, to second it. Uh, but I'd otherwise like to make a motion to uh, designate Vice President Pickens uh, to be this board's representative at the General Assembly uh, at the time uh, indicated in the presentation. I'll second that. All right, we have a motion to second to nominate uh, Vice President uh, Pickens to uh, fill that role at this time. Uh, any discussion? Uh, go ahead, Larry. Uh, Director Pickens, are you interested? Yeah, that well, I was, I, was, I, to, uh... I was waiting for his hand to come up, but I guess we could do that. <laughs> I was I was checking my calendar before I put the hand up. I guess yeah. I could have put the hand, hand up first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I'm 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 assuming that um, twenty it's the 29th and thirty. 29th, thirtieth, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, if there's certainly if there's a uh um I may may just have to look at um the 29th just to see with my I I think that I could with with some potential flexibility, and I I do know that we have the ability to to reach. I, I believe this is the case to reach out to others if there's if yep. there's a need to kind of fill the gaps. So with that understanding, I I think we could I could make that work. Yeah. So basically, it would be. I mean, if we were in live session uh, as well, um, it would be you, the our designator designated individual would be the holder of the 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 ticket and uh, that ticket can be passed off to another individual so if there was a conflict you could definitely contact one of us and say hey i can't make the the first hour whatever that looked like um okay. to be able to uh to to jump in and, and fill that in okay well fair, fair uh, enough yep brian great thanks and uh, eric again i apologize i, I didn't give you the <laughs> to you or Larry uh, and that's me making an assumption with President Gibson uh, since he and I are our terms are ending shortly uh, I do want to capstone this by saying if it boiled down to um, needing it I'm, I'm more than happy to help out wherever needed uh, so it's not a lack of uh, wanting to do my part it's just recognizing the dynamics of uh, the continuity of terms and, uh, and whatnot. So um, I appreciate your initial willingness, uh, but please uh, don't hesitate to call on me if I can help uh, by throwing you under the bus just now. You're free to respond, uh, Eric. If you'd well, care to. Uh, well, it's it's on a slightly different note. Um, um, obviously, not knowing. Um, specifics regarding um director stoffer's um leave can i what would i assume that if um in in the event that there's a there's a return that we would we would proceed as we had originally intended is that um is that a fair assumption yeah i would say uh that would be okay very good thank you we'll just have to what, what i'll have to do though too is once we make this uh, I'll, have, I'll reach out to uh, um, Tim tomorrow and to uh, just make sure they have that uh, information okay so, so you can be provided that uh, Larry you had something to add but yeah I was going to say that uh, reaching out to was to make sure we do this correctly yep. we can have one voting one voting member and it doesn't necessarily need to be the legislative rep and in this case it would be uh, director Pickens, I know yep. there's one day in there, maybe the 29th, I forget. I heard, heard it someplace on a WASDA session that they pretty much expect the voting member or somebody with voting credentials to be there all day. Yeah. So be aware of that. So reaching out to WASDA on this short yep. notice that, um, and then I would encourage the rest of us here to um, give Eric, whatever feedback we could, uh, if we have specific legislative um, Items, issues yeah. or think we want to promote. Otherwise, you know, we give Eric free reign to vote yep. how he feels best to vote. Yep. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and, and, back, you know, back to what I stated earlier to uh, uh, Director Pickens is that uh, he, you know, um, Director Pickens would have the credential and he can pass that credential off uh, if, if needed. So it's, it's similar to if you, uh, I don't know, Director Ku uh, and I have attended this uh, live in the past and there were, um, I know there was a particular issue that I, that I was, uh, I had a strong uh, kind of feeling towards and, and at that time, uh, Director Stoffer handed me the credential and then I got up and went and spoke on that and then uh, took, took that, pieces are voting person so that can be passed off but go ahead eric oh sorry didn't realize that was still up yeah, yeah. i'm all good okay all right so uh did we get a vote on this yet it's coming up here there we go
There we go. And I will reach out to Tim tomorrow. <clears throat> okay next up we have uh so we have a one of the this covid mandate discussion and uh, uh director ku had reached out to me and and had asked a couple of questions as well and um just wanted to kind of go back to you know this just the discussion at hand that we've we've come across just regarding you know the mandates that we have uh what our uh capabilities are within those um and uh you know and that kind of thing uh i i you know it had a discussion when we were in agenda planning putting this on here as well um with with Dr. Prine as well, and you know, just maybe looking at, I guess from a question standpoint, is you know, and I know I used the term hands tied earlier, and Director Jeffries, you know, stated his kind of thoughts on that, uh, but uh, really, I guess the, the the discussion around what are the implications? Let's say. And I'm not stating we, you know, that we're going to vote on this at any point. But let's say that we did decide to not follow mandate, for example. Uh, what what are I mean? We we have been re, we have have received uh, info down from WASDA and OSPI on what that means. Uh, but from that standpoint, I know that there are some. You know, uh, there's there's a warning and a second warning, and then after the, those warnings, then then we get uh, a fined uh, or apportionment. You know, what what does that amount to? Uh, what does that look like? Uh, and you know, I, I you know part of that question is to maybe just have Dr. Prine just to get maybe a little more uh, details on that um, uh, moving forward. And and Director Ku, I, I don't know if you wanted to jump in here and. Uh, with some of your thoughts on that, go ahead. Uh, you, you brought this to my attention, and so I felt okay. Well, let's at least get this into a discussion portion as well. So, go ahead, Brian. Floor is yours. Great, thank you. And I, I got to start by saying I really appreciate uh, to the executive committee for uh, advancing this to the agenda uh, as I had requested. Um, and I, I do have obviously some opinions on this and uh, biases uh, coming into this. And I said, I guess for the sake of uh, making those clear. I do believe that a lot of the decisions, and, and actually, uh, let me be specific, <laughs> all of the decisions related to vaccine mandates, masking mandates, and uh, similar topics du jour uh, should befall this school board uh, in consultation with our superintendent and our local health director. Uh, and I have a few. I have a few reasons for that. Not the least of which being that at the end of the day, um, our parents know what's best for their students. Now, at some point, difficult decisions have to be made about require requirements in mass. Um, you know, so to speak. You know, you have to have you have to have passed the first grade in order to advance to the second grade, and things like that. Um, obviously, this this COVID situation has been an, an incredibly impassioned topic over the past year and a half, or two years now, um, however long it's been. Um, but I feel very strongly, and I've 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 researched this, I've meditated on this. Um, I history may prove me wrong, but as I sit here today, um, I do feel uh, that these decisions should be made as close to the parents as possible. And in that case, those are the individuals who have elected us uh, to make these decisions. Um, so what I'm, the reason I wanted to bring this forward and appeal to my colleagues on the school board, and if we get to an actual point tonight or even to our next meeting, what I would ask is at the very least, um, making a statement to OSPI, making a statement to the governor, making a statement to the state board of health 
uh, that we believe these decisions need to befall locally elected bodies. And in our case for SWIM, that's us. That's our school board. And like I said, in consultation with our highly qualified CEO and our highly qualified local uh, medical director, because the reason I say highly qualified is obviously we are of the people and for the people. So I will, I will openly attest to the fact that I am not highly qualified uh, for medical decisions, but I know the healthy skepticism that I have, and we've discussed here before, uh, the higher up and the more um, monolithic uh, of a decision these things occur. Uh, and like I said, I'm, um, you know, to be perfectly honest, history may prove me wrong, and that's something I'm prepared to face. But what I would like to see is an ability to respond uh, more directly to uh, our parents and our students that I've heard. And like you, I've talked to students like you, I've talked to parents. Um, but I, uh, I guess my ask here tonight, uh, in, in what form or fashion that may take, is for this board to collectively uh, support a statement, a letter, uh, asking our uh, state agencies to uh, appropriately defer this decision to a local level. Um, it just doesn't belong at a state level. Um, we have no business uh, the governor has no business uh, demanding what happens in Squim, Tenasket, um, Enumclaw, uh, Walla Walla, and the like. Uh, you know, we're, we're of the people for the people here, uh, and I do feel very strongly that it makes the most sense uh, for us to be able to respond accordingly. Um, part of that is born in frustration uh, as we receive public comments, uh, because I openly acknowledge and fully accept that we are cut off at the knees to be able to make these decisions right now. Um, I know some of that is up for debate um, in the public dialogue, uh, but I do believe that uh, that is not the case. Um, there's a big stick that's carried and um, we are under it. Uh, and I would like for that not to be the case. Um, and in, in a way, frankly, this is work that uh, I would just as soon avoid on a personal level, uh, but that's just uh, me being a human. Uh, but for folks listening, I want you to know that it's, it's important to me that uh, your elected officials have the ability, sorry for my cat, uh, and, a, and authority uh, to make these decisions at a local level that makes the most sense for our communities. So those are my thoughts, but happy to answer any questions and otherwise just appreciate the fact that uh, we can talk about this tonight. Thank you. I was, I was trying to determine whether your cat was agreeing or not agreeing with you in the background there. Uh, Larry. Yeah, I'm trying to put my thoughts. I agree with Director Ku in that it's the local decision to do what's best for our students. And in this time of a public health emergency, I think that's exactly what we're doing by following the um, the legal mandates of the governor. I know mandate law, there's a lot of argument, but he gave a lawful order that we need to follow. I know in my career as an educator, oh, I can't remember what kind of vaccination proof I had to have. Now this is back in New Mexico and their laws are different. I know at one time I was mandated or required by law to get hepatitis uh, vaccination. Uh, it seemed to me like every year I had to get a tuber tuberculosis test also, and um, that as a condition of employment. And um, I do not remember the school board or the teachers fighting those kinds of um, public health requirements. And this, this pandemic is statewide, nationwide, worldwide, and I think it, it takes uh, an an effort of everyone to try to put a stop to this particular pandemic. It's not a, a popularity contest and uh, not, I feel this way, it's my opinion that it should be this. It's basically, we need to follow the laws. And um, in looking at the uh, potential penalties, unless the school district is willing to come up with several million dollars out of their own pocket, 
we rely on state funding to do what we're doing. And uh, I think that's a real concern. As far as a, a letter of non-support or a letter of concern to the governor's office that uh, the decision should be left up to local, I would not be in favor of that because it is a countywide, statewide, nationwide, worldwide pandemic. And it's gonna take all of us to uh, put a stop to it. And that means some um, unpopular requirements placed on all of us. Now, my bias, I am fully vaccinated. I will get a booster when that becomes available. I'm, I have a Moderna shot. I um, carry my card around with me all the time. And I was asked twice at two local restaurants to prove that I was vaccinated, no problem. And I think this is um, gonna be a way of life for a while. And I think it's best that we follow uh, these mandates. And of course, my other concern is, well, then what other regulations and mandates do we locally vote on that we don't agree with? Don't agree, we should be able to use whatever pesticide we want and not uh, be uh, worried about regulations and, and health concerns. So I, I guess I'm in favor of following the governor, OSPI, following public health and um, medical advice from the CDC, although they've been a little bit confusing lately, I'll agree with that. Um, so I, I think we need to uh, protect the health and safety of our students, our staff and the community by um, getting on board with these mandates. And I, I would prefer to see 100% staff um, fully vaccinated. Any, anything less than that, that means we're going to have to let some people go and that would be, uh, I feel bad about that. I feel, you know, but they would be no longer certified, eligible, certificated to work in the, in the schools and um, that's the way it is for uh, a lot of our regulations. I didn't say that as well as I wanted but to, but um, I'm, uh, I'm convinced that we need to follow that path of following the mandates and the regulations and the laws as currently written. And if we lived in the state where they weren't, um, mandating masks and mandating vaccinations, and we decided to, I would vote for that, even though it might be in uh, non-compliance, because I think that's good medical practice, good public health practice. That's what um, makes sense. So that's my two cents. Thank you, Larry. Uh, Eric. Yeah. I, um... In almost all cases, I I do agree that there should the the vast majority of decision making should be done locally. That's why we're elected. That's why we're here, and we can um, get the public input. I, um, along with um, Director Jeffries, I don't think I in this particular case, I don't think that I would be in favor of um, uh, what. Um, Director Koo had suggested for for a couple of reasons, though. I um, um, although I, I I do consider myself to be aligned with with uh, Director Jeffrey's view on on some of these mandates that are in place and what I I particularly believe is the right course of action. That aside, I I think we need to be be unified in doing what's what's going to be the safest course of action for for our our kids, for our community, for our staff. And um, it's that that being unified, I, I think even if we were just sending a message about local decisions, which, which I do by and large support local decisions, in this current climate, I think it sends a completely different message um, that, that although I support local decisions, it would be sending a message that would be um, contrary to the message that I would be supportive of. Um, it's, um, and I think the outcome, let's, if that, if it were to be effective, I think the outcome would still leave us without, um, you may remember back when the pandemic first started, um, back, um, 
when 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 schools closed down and um, in March, there was a lot of talk at, the, at that point, there was, um, and then there was the talk of the hybrid. And at that point, there was a lot of guidance that was going out um, from the State Department of Health regard, and recommendations. And we found that um, even if we did not follow that guidance or those recommendations, we had some serious liability issues if we chose not to. So even when it wasn't mandated, we still had to deal with the legal liability. and. Um, quite honestly, even if things were done as recommendations right now at the state level, I believe wholeheartedly that we would still have that legal liability issue and we would have problems with, um, with our insurance covering us. And that is, um, I've, I've said it several times before, but that is another factor besides the mandates that from a funding perspective is liability that we we have to be aware of because we do not have an unlimited amount of funds here to work with. So, um, so even if there's there's a CDC recommendation and we go against that, there's there's that legal liability issue. So, um, unfortunately, I, I, I that's with with our fiduciary responsibility. I that's something that I wouldn't be able to ignore regardless. So, um, but I, I appreciate the conversation and. Um, and I, I see uh, I see Director Cruz hand up again, so I'm I'm certainly um, willing to hear more. And um, but uh, but respectfully, that's kind of where I'm at at this point. Thank you. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Brian. Great, thank you. And yeah, th I agree. This is good dialogue. Um, and I, I guess I, I personally wasn't really prepared to dive down the rabbit hole of my opinion about the, the mandates or not, even though I feel obliged to uh, let you all know of my current positions. Uh, to be clear, the masking mandate is something I've had an evolving perspective on um, in talking with folks. But really the crux of what I'm getting here, and I don't mean for it to be surreptitious, you know, as an avenue to <laughs> some agenda, <laughs> although we all have agendas, I guess, right? Um, but it is the matter of local control. Um, that is, that is the, the, you know, the, the bug in my craw, if you will, or whatever the bee in my bonnet is, you know, at what level should uh, these decisions be made. And so, um, you know, that's, that's what I'm approaching it as immediately. Um, but obviously, if this board did choose to make a statement that said, uh, hey, we, you know, we appreciate the work that's gone into this, we appreciate the intent. And I think we're all pretty uniform in that. Um, but we feel this should be a local matter. Um, uh, that, that's really the, the paradigm that I'm looking at this through. Um, so I certainly won't fault uh, folks if no one is compelled enough to make a motion uh, necessarily, but uh, I just want to be clear on kind of limiting the scope of, of this specific matter, uh, but with the points, you know, well taken. Um, you know, I, I do have opinions on uh, mandates and whether that's uh, on the right side of history or not. Uh, but I'm really trying to just limit this to um, where, at what level should these decisions be made? And I will uh, currently plant my flag in the ground of saying, uh, I believe this board, uh, as elected by our local parents and community members, uh, should be empowered to make these decisions as we do with curriculum, as we do with policy, as we do with procedure, as we do with hiring uh, our CEO for the district. Um, I believe uh, those decisions are best left in the hands of this board. And I want to be very clear <laughs> in consultation or alongside with uh, our superintendent and our local health director. Um, so I'm not uh, leaving those important individuals out of the picture. Um, so just to clarify, but I appreciate the comments and again, grateful to have this conversation. Tonight. So, so I'll, I'll throw my Kind of two cents perspective in in here as well uh and, and what you know while we're talking where our thoughts and personal opinions are i per, i personally am adamant against the mandate for vaccinations uh I, i'm i'm losing some wonderful staff uh to that uh I'm, I'm kind of where you are brian when it comes to the masking piece uh i i kind of go 
I'm, I'm torn on that as well. You know, does it work? Does it not work? Uh, but I will say this kind of in light of what you're, what you're asking. Um, and, and, and it might be a far stretch, but I'll just do it. Use this, you know, when we're talking about health and safety, uh, would it be appropriate, say, for the, our local um, county representatives to say we believe that uh, we should be able to sell alcohol to 18-year-olds? Um, that's a health and safety question. So do we want that down at the local level or do we just continue to follow the state level uh, kind of uh, I added? And again, that may be a far stretch, but I, but I do, um, you know, we're not going to, you know, I, I don't agree with a lot of the decisions made at the higher levels as they are. Unfortunately, they are what they are, and, and we, we have to follow suit. And I, and I know this is kind of a silly um, uh, piece, but, you know, I drive back and forth to Port Angeles every day. It drives me nuts that I have to keep staying at 45 miles an hour between the two construction zones. But yet that is what has been determined. There's not any unsafe situation there. So I have a choice. I either drive 45 miles an hour or I get pulled over and get a ticket and pay the consequence for that. And that was a, you know, that's a, it's, it, it's a process that, that I have to, you know, I have to choose which, what I, what I follow. That was a decision that was made. I, I follow or I don't, you know. Um, so I, I, I hear you. Uh, I, and, and I think all of us are in agreement that there are particular items that probably, you know, that definitely belong in our hands locally. Um, but, I, but, you know, I, I think there are other items that may not, that, that probably don't as well. Um, so that's, that's just my, my thoughts on that. And I'll, I'll turn it back over to Larry. Yeah, not much, kind of in the same lines. Um, there's a whole bevy of laws, regulations coming down from the state OSPI about how our schools can operate. And we have to uh, operate under this whole set of laws. And within that, in that umbrella or those requirements, we do as a board can make local decisions about many, many, many things. But there's a whole nother batch of things over here we don't have any say in because that's the, the mandate in the law that's handed down to us from the state OSPI. And we have a lot of federal programs, mandates that come with that. So within that uh, framework, yes, local decisions are very important and there are certain things we can decide locally. I just think this, this issue about the, um, the public health mandates that have come down is like, as Director Gibson mentioned, like mandating drinking laws, we can't just vote in SWIM to allow 18 year olds to buy whatever liquor they want. We can't just drive at any speed we want. Um, so that within that personal freedom, uh, community freedom, board freedom, um, there are things we can do and things we can't do. Thank you. All right, and uh, I'll let you uh, finish it off there, Eric. And no, do you have anything for that? No, I just wanted to share with my board colleagues. I, I appreciate the conversation, mm -hmm. and to the chair, I appreciate and agree with your frustration about the speed zone between construction <laughs> zones. Just wanted to say. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's right with you there. All right. <laughs> Not relevant. Okay. But. No, but I appreciate I, I Brian, I think this was a great topic. I'm glad you did uh, bring it to us. And, you know, we discussed it at agenda planning, thought it was important to at least have the discussion on it here. And, uh, um, you know, and, yeah, it's just good to be able to have these conversations. I would just ditto that and thank, thank the board for the discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I do appreciate it. Okay. Uh, next up, we have uh, about 132 different first readings on some uh, policies. Uh, any, any of these particularly we need to have another look at from our policy meeting and discuss? All right. Go ahead, Larry. Other than 
fill in some blanks with the Squim School District and things like that on these. I was looking through my list of concerns. I really don't see much. Uh, and this is for another discussion. I noticed policy 6905, and I don't have any idea what number that is, uh, 1015. Site acquisition, it says that we're supposed to acquire building sites substantially in advance of actual construction. Now, I know we've had trouble passing a bond issue. Um, it looks to me like down the road, we're going to need a new elementary school. And if that's built on the current site, that's one thing. If it's going to be built in another area, I guess probably east of Squim, where a lot of the growth is occurring, it's in this um, real estate market right now, buying land substantially in advance is um, it would be a challenge. Let's just put it that way. But I think the wordings there and the policy, I don't really disagree with it. But something to think about. Great, thing. Can uh, can y'all hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, great. I, no, I just I I suddenly got something that came up. Zoom meeting is not responding. Uh, close or or wait for response. And I'm hoping I was still connected. So I'm just going to let it do its thing. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, and 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 this is actually I think our last batch of stuff. Uh, of policies, I think Tracy was mentioning there. So once we get these approved, uh, then and we have our policy committee that's uh, that's starting its works as uh, looking forward to to that piece as well. All right. With that said, I think um, I think that is it. As I said, my screen is freaking out. So uh, looks like it is a. Any any uh, body with anything for the good of the order? Go ahead, Larry. Just gonna say I don't know if Caleb's still here. I had to look at his name to get my tongue untied <laughs> so I could say Caleb. So I apologize to him and others for not being able to say that. Looks like maybe um, he's gone on to do his homework because he did mention earlier before the meeting that he. It, um, his coursework this year was pretty tough, so good for him. All right, anybody else? He's still here, but don't worry about it. <laughs> I, was gonna say, oh. I want to give him a shout out. He's still here. Nice. I was looking for you, but I just didn't see you on the, on the list. So, Caleb, thank you. <laughs> All right, anybody else before we go? Uh, just uh, just one thing to know, I should have addressed this earlier, but just I know Director, um, Director Koo had mentioned the uh, the need to get um, an executive executive session oh, yeah. scheduled. And I just wanted to note that I think we do have that in the plans coming up. We just weren't able to to get it locked in before this agenda was was locked in. But I, I think that is the plan, if I'm not mistaken, and an upcoming board meeting is not um, uh, yeah, we may we may look at. I'll I'll connect with uh, you and Dr. Prine, and we may see if there's something we can do prior to that. If uh, yeah. I think we do have a couple of items to discuss. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Thank you. I'll make it a priority. Yep. Okay. Uh, with that said, uh, um, I'll let my Zoom uh, finish doing whatever it thinks it's want to do. And my wife has informed me. Can you jump out of your meeting? We have. I got to get chickens in coyotes seem to be running around. So <laughs> uh, everybody have a great rest of your evening. Uh, thank you all. Uh, and thank you those that attended tonight. Thank you. Agree. Thank you, everybody. Yep. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you.